I'm not that scared, but please hear me out. This is a story from when I was only four or five years old. We didn't have a bath at home at the time, so I used to go to the public bath with my mother. I was still small, so I used to go to the women's bath with my mother. One day, after washing my body, I got bored. I was playing pool in the bathtub. I had never noticed before that the bathtub has a staircase and a door from the side of the bathtub. Maybe this is the case everywhere. I suddenly noticed the door. I was suddenly curious about the door, so I climbed the steps and went to the door. There was a large keyhole directly under the doorknob. I was excited and peeked in. The other side was covered by something and I couldn't see it. What the heck, it's not a knob. I looked up once. What did I think? I looked into the keyhole again. In the dim light, I saw an instrument that looked like a boiler. Wow, that was amazing. I was peeking into it, absorbed in it. Was it a sign behind the door, or was it something that informed me? Suddenly I looked away and backed away, and the next thing I knew the tip of a flathead screwdriver was dancing madly through the keyhole. I gasped and left there too, scared to even tell my mother. Later on in life, as a child, I quickly forgot about the incident and went on with my life. Soon after we moved out of the house, I went to the bathhouse after cleaning the house. I took all sorts of junk I found during the cleanup for later use. As I was playing in the bath, as usual, I remembered that keyhole in the door, but I had forgotten the horror, so I went to look through the keyhole with the basin of junk in my arms. Again, the other side was covered by something and I could not see anything. I took out a pair of chopsticks from the junk and plunged them into the keyhole with a heavy hand. At that moment, I flinched at the slamming presence on the other side of the door and removed my hand from the chopsticks. The chopsticks remained there, shaking, but eventually fell to this side. A few centimeters from the tip were broken off. Again I said nothing to my mother. After that day, our family moved to the next city. A few years later, as an elementary school student, I went to visit the town where I used to live. The first place I went was to the precincts of the shrine where the children used to socialize. I thought I would see my old friends there, but contrary to my expectations, no one was there. No, there was a big man in front of a big tree behind the shrine grounds, doing something single-mindedly. At that moment, a memory of the past came back to me. He was the young man we had feared and called, Mickey. He had silver hair that was almost transparent and red eyes like a rabbit, and now I think he might have been an albino. He was morbidly violent, and would repeatedly break into our games of Menkyo and Bagoma, take things away from us, and beat us up. He was a person of unknown background who repeatedly took things away from us and beat us up. He was right in front of me. I felt as if I were in bondage, unable to speak to him or run away. He stopped moving and slowly turned to face me. One of his eyes was crushed. 